Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. And about every day on this channel, I hear a question about direct injection because it's been a new thing coming out last couple of years. It's got a lot of bad rap over the last couple of years. And so every brand is kind of moving to direct injection and people are going, well, hey, it's just going to build up more carbon deposits. It's going to be bad for the engine. Why not do direct injection on top of the cylinder and port injection? So if you don't know what direct injection is, it's where they're pushing gasoline into the cylinder more efficiently for a create more performance, get more horsepower and torque, and have a better, in some cases, a better performance overall of the engine by having a direct injection. And so there's always a lot of conversation about this, a lot of debate online. I'm not an engineer, but hey, I talk to them. Yeah, they ask me questions, I answer questions, we ask them a video. So I wanna play a video I did with a GM engineer. Um, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but I wanna talk, first of all, let's discuss what carbon buildup is and what carbon buildup in the engine is. And so carbon deposits and buildup are a byproduct of combustion in the engine that comes from incomplete fuel combustion. The, this black soot, you can see it here in the photo, is similar to what collects in the chimney, will harden on internal com engine components such as injector nozzles, cylinder walls, intake valves, and more. And so what that is, is it's from direct injection. So you add more fuel to the cylinder, right? That's a direct, you add more fuel to the cylinder, and if you don't get a complete burn of that fuel, you get carbon buildup, which you saw the black soot buildup. And over time, it'll create durability issues. It'll create problems with performance, won't perform as well. And then you have to do a full engine rebuild or whatever trick you can do these days to get all the carbon out of the engine. And so people are going, well, hey, we have this new thing called port injection. So you have direct injection going in the cylinder and port injection goes up. And the thinking here is with the fuel going up and fuel going in, you have a more complete burn of that fuel. And that's what people want. They're like, hey, I read a press release. It said direct injection. What the hell? Why don't you do a port injection? Why don't you give me both, best of both worlds? And so if you look at like the 2.7 in the new Colorado and the Silverado has a 2.7 as well. And other brands are doing this. I'm not trying to be like Chevy only, whatever kind of brand. Other brands are doing this with those engines. If you look at the press release, it says direct fuel injection is used to optimize efficiency and performance. With direct injection, a higher compression ratio is possible because of a cooling effect as the injected fuel vaporizes in the combustion chamber. Reducing the charge temperature and improving resistance to spark knock, direct injection also enables, enables gas scavenging from the combustion chamber to the turbo for fast response. So what they're, what they're saying here is they're gonna use direct injection to make it more efficient and improve performance. They get a higher compression ratio and they get, because of the way the direct injection works, they're actually cooling the engine a little bit. And so they vaporize the cylinder completely. That's what, they're, that's what the goal is. But again, you think, why not have direct and port injection? So let's go to this video here because I shot this video a couple years ago, which is a, it's kind of a shame. This video is on the 90, what, 9,000 views. It's really, if you guys want to know about engine technology, this is the man I pulled aside. And he's discussing, he's a, a General Motors engineer. In this video, he's discussing the heavy duty. So the new 6.6 gas engine and heavy duty. But the same things he's talking about will apply to other engines. And I'll show you on the 2.7 how it actually applies the same think thought process he has with direct injection. So I'm going to, I'm going to play this little snippet. I'm not going to play the whole entire video. I just want to talk only in direct injection. And so let's get to that right now. You and I have been on talking to customers. We've been on forums and things. What do you think one of the big misconceptions you're seeing out there with these new engines? Well, I'm really glad you asked him. Um, what I believe is uh, the biggest misconception. There's a lot of questions out there about direct fuel injection. Um, there seems to be some belief that uh, by having direct injection that you're somehow uh, minimizing your, your durability. So with the new 6.6 .6 liter gas engine we have as a standard equipment in the new Silverado HD, it does now come for the first time in, in the heavy duty segment with direct injection. So obviously we wanna make sure that our customers are aware that even though we've added that technology, there's been no degradation in the performance and the durability. Now you may ask why, and that's a fair question. Um, we very carefully engineer the combustion chamber so that when that fuel spray comes into the chamber, it atomizes completely. So you don't get the wall wetting and uh, other deposits on the side of the, the cylinder bore, which if, you have, if you're washing the, the fuel bore, you actually start uh, having metal to metal contact with the rings, which accelerates wear, which causes oil consumption. Those things are all bad. So what we do on the Silverado HD is we inject the fuel at, at 2,200 PSI. It fully atomizes the gasoline into vapor. Um, that vapor is carefully targeted to the ignition system so that it completely burns, maximizing its use, delivering you full power and torque, and maximizing the fuel efficiency. It's a win across the board. Um, with the advantages we get 
of direct injection. Because one other thing I'd like to remind you is uh, just like if it's a hot day and, and you take a, a, a squirt can of water and you mist it on yourself, it feels cool. The same thing happens in the combustion chamber. If you're atomizing the fuel, it actually cools the charge. With a cool charge, we're able to add spark, add performance, and that allows us to increase the compression ratio. So you can make that 401 horsepower, 464 foot-pounds of torque, all on regular fuel. You don't have to put premium in this thing to get those numbers. So you just pull up to a standard pump, you put the regular fuel in, and you can have confidence that you're gonna hit those numbers and be able to tow that vehicle. So of course, we, we make sure that we want every heavy duty to have the full uh, durability target. Um, so we have carefully engineered, we have uh, dedicated components for the heavy duty. We carefully engineer the pump, the camshaft, all the interfaces with the direct injection to make sure they can meet the heavy duty needs. So I'm absolutely confident that your Chevrolet Silverado HD will have no degradation in its durability as a result of having a direct injection. Okay, so a couple things to take away from that is I can't tell you how excited he was to ask that question. Like he was like, thank God, because he reads the forums. He's on the forums like most engineers. He's probably watched this video. Other Chevy engineers watching this video right now, too. Um, these guys want to answer your questions, but they're kind of handcuffed a little bit with PR. They can only answer certain times and you know certain ways and because they really want to you know say certain things, I can tell you. But I mean, he was really wanting to explain that because, it, again, it gets a bad rap. So let's the biggest takeaway from that video is they've increased the pressure. They've increased the pressure going into the cylinder. That way it gets more efficient burns. So he said 2,200 PSI in the 6.6 liter gas, right? So what do they do in this new 2.7 liter? So that's the biggest news is that 2.7 liter, new liter. turbocharged engine, too small, four cylinders, not beefy enough. It's going to be terrible. And when you go down and look at the fuel delivery, they have a high pressure direct injection, 3,000 PSI, and electronic throttle control with active fuel management. So... 3,000 PSI, uh, they're shooting that fuel into the cylinder for a more complete burn. And he says what well, it autonomizes the, all the gasoline in that engine. So it's interesting. I think that the end result I got from this was uh, direct injection used to be bad. Used to call it carbon buildup. They want port injection to kind of offset that. And then they're like, well, why don't we just spray the fuel in the cylinder faster and stronger? And that way we get more of a complete burn and actually get a little cooling effect. The reason he brought up premium fuel is because premium fuel, and I, I've learned this over the years, premium fuel burns cooler than regular gasoline. And so you have a cooler chamber. And when things are cooler, things are more compressed, you get a much more efficiency. So, you know, it's good with turbos, for example. They, they want to run hot, but they want cold air. And the same idea happens in engines' overall performance. So uh, direct injection, uh, is it bad? Not so much. Did it have a, does it have a bad rap? Oh, yeah. People, bad rap, been a bad, and bad design for years and years. Um, but when we're seeing now is engine technology is starting to do that higher pressure spray in the, in the chamber, and that's going to offset those long-term concerns. That's what their answer is. That's what my answer is. That's what I know. But I'm sure you have thoughts. <laughs> so put your comments down below. I'll be enjoying reading those guys. I always love reading the comments. I'll put a comment link to this video as well. Again, 9,000 views. It's a shame. It's a really good video. It talks about dynamic fuel management. You guys ask me questions about that all the time. It's right there. It talks about turbos. It's right there. I mean, it's really good information. He talks about chain versus belt. Right there. I mean, it's just all the, all the information you guys ask questions for. I did it. Check out the video. Also, check out the videos over here. Website down below, pickuptrucktalk.com. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.